I'm Hubert and today we are going to be reviewing this game here. It's called Wreck and Ruin. It's by Mark McKinnon uh, and published by uh, Big Dream Games. It's a post-apocalyptic demolition derby game. I uh, met Mark at Econ 5 earlier this year. Uh, we started chatting, he showed me his game and he was kind enough to give me a copy and I said I re would review it for him. So first of all, we're going to, uh, I'm going to just talk you through a short tutorial just to give you an idea of the game and then I'll let you know what I thought of it. To play Wreck and Ruin, first choose one of the four factions, collect their corresponding vehicles, a player aid, their faction card and dice. Then set up the border with seven tiles, one in the middle and the others around it. Some of them will have starting points for each of the factions. The boards are double sided and can be orientated to form different layouts. They also have obstacles and hazard terrain. Place the round tracker next to the board so it's orientated the same way as the board. Then place the event and salvage decks, salvage tokens, flame pegs and other tokens next to the board. Each player draws one faction and salvage card and receives five action point tokens. In a three to four player game, the first player receives an extra one for their first round. They take it in turns to place their vehicles in their starting area. Each player has five vehicles two scouts, one buggy, a wrecker and a big rig. They all have different stats and special powers. These are the same across all the factions. Each player in turn places a salvage site token on the middle tile red side up until there are four in total. Retrieving salvage from these sites will score victory points to win the game. To do so, a vehicle must end its movement on the tile. It is flipped over to its green side. If the vehicle has not been damaged or pushed off the token by the end of the next player's turn, the token is won and kept by that player for, the, for end game scoring. They also receive the top salvage card off the deck. The player whose turn just ended rolls a die and places a new salvage token onto the board on the tile according to the round tracker. At the start of some rounds, see the round tracker, an event card is drawn. Each player resolves the event at the start of their turn. Then the players spend their AP tokens. They can then move their vehicles, attack a target within range, ram an adjacent vehicle or search a wreck for salvage. Each vehicle can be activated twice during a turn. They can also search an area for salvage, attempt to repair a wreck or bring a vehicle back onto the board. All but the big rigs have a forward facing 180 degree firing arc with a range of three hexes. Big rigs have a 360 degree firing circle with a range of three. When you initiate an attack to see if you hit, roll the number of attack dice according to the attacking vehicle stats and compare it to the defender's armor. For every roll that is equal or above the armor's value, a point of damage is done. Any sixes you rolled are auto hits and re-roll to see if you score another. For each hit, place a flame peg on the vehicle. If there is only one left, place a black flame peg in the last hole to indicate that the vehicle is now a wreck and resolve what happens to it. It can crash out of control and hit friendly enemies alike. The mechanism for this is on one side of the player aid. You can also ram other vehicles, pushing them into hazards, off salvage sites, or just because you can. After five or more rounds, the player with the most salvage tokens wins. So that's a quick run through of how to play Wreck and Ruin. There are other rules, but this tutorial should give you a flavor of how this game is played. Okay, I'm back up top and I'll let you know what I think of this game. First of all, component-wise, the boards are thick. It's a decent card. Uh, well, the cards are decent stock. Uh, the tokens are also made of a solid cardboard. Uh, the minis are just outstanding. 
Uh, they're solid plastic. There's no flimsiness. You know, they're not likely to break. Uh, they are all unique to the factions. Uh, there's no like a generic big rig. They're all different. Uh, they would look great if you painted them, if you have that ability, that skill, all the time. Uh, or you could just put a simple wash over them just to bring out the detail. Uh, the rule book itself is well laid out. If you're stuck on how to play a certain rule, the it's easy to find the relevant section. Uh, the pegs are about the only thing that I could fault in this game, uh, the little flame pegs. They can be a little bit fiddly to uh, put into each of the vehicles, but you will normally find that if you're playing uh, two or three players, there'll be somebody in there who can give you a hand. So it's not an issue. It's I'm just kind of nitpicking here. I'm just trying to find fault. But I would say component-wise, this game is absolutely amazing. The box actually comes with its own little tray uh, with a lid for all the minis to fit into, as well as the cards and other bits. And you know, that's one of the big selling points of this game. Uh, Gameplay-wise, uh, it's a very simple game to play. Uh, the mechanisms are very slick and intuitive. Uh, you may have to refer to the rule book when it comes to some of the less uh, well, less played rules, say uh, what happens when you're ramming or something like that. If you don't do that very often, you might need to refer to the rule book. But as I said earlier, it's really easy to find these details. And the the overall game is a great deal of fun to play uh, there's it gives you player aids that help you uh, when it comes to like combat what how many dice you have to roll what numbers you have to hit uh, exactly what happens when a vehicle is wrecked and how it will move or be, it will behave depending on the roll uh, this is a game that you could uh, teach to new gamers uh, it's a little bit borderline with uh, whether I say it's a, a gateway game, but the, like I said, it's very, very simple. Uh, the only niggle that I would have with this game is I wonder whether the factions are distinct enough. Now, at this point in time, I haven't played this game as every single faction, so I couldn't tell you, uh, but it's a possible issue. Uh, the vehicle stats are the same across the board, so it doesn't matter what faction you're playing, a wrecker is gonna have the same stats as another wrecker. Now that's fine. It's useful when it comes to rolling, but the part of me that likes variable player powers just kind of wants each of them to be just slightly different. But, you know, that's sort of half a dozen of this and half, you know, and six of another. Um, the game can feel a little bit short, but it does say in the rule book that you can tweak the number of rounds that you play. That um, we played, on my first game, we only played four rounds, and the, the, the general consensus was that we wanted more, we wanted to keep going. And you can do that if you want. Um, uh, replayability um, is good. The maps will change. They're, like I said, the, the boards are double-sided, and there are, are alternative modes that you can play that are in the back of the rule book. So you could go for like an arcade mode where the, the pieces just keep coming back or you can go for last man standing. So you don't really worry about, uh, about uh, who's gonna, how many vehicles you wreck. It's just who's last person standing. Oh well, yeah, you can tweak this game uh, pretty much until you've come up with a version that you like. And that's one of the great things about it, is that it has this kind of adaptability uh, and tweakability that, and, uh, that you can just bring your own particular kind of flavor to this game. Uh, this game will also change depending on the number of players you've got and the factions that are being played. So yes, this game has a great deal of replayability. I know that uh, Mark is also working on a fifth faction and 
uh, other things in the pipeline, so expansions will continue the longevity of this game. Uh, Theme-wise, I think the theme's pretty pretty strong. Uh, for a barren landscape vehicle warfare game, it works well. Uh, when I thought uh, if any other theme would work on this, um, spaceships or boats ramming each other just didn't kind of work. Um, the salvage cards can give you a feel of desperation as you I often found myself hunting through my uh, cars trying to find something to help me in a battle and going like, uh, there's nothing. And then my vehicle being wrecked because of it. And I'm like, oh well. So there is that sense of desperation as you would have if you were uh, stuck in this post-apocalyptic post uh, wasteland. Um, there are... Uh, one aspect of this game that doesn't work for me in terms of its theme is occasionally you will find that there will be a vehicle that doesn't move uh, during your turn. And you'd imagine that it would continue to move if it was moving in that direction, that vehicles don't just kind of break and stop uh, for no reason. Uh, I found that a little bit off. Uh, because you only have like a certain number of action points that you can use per round and if you're if you if you are involved in combat you it costs an action point to attack another vehicle so some of your vehicles are not going to move it becomes less of an issue when you've uh, later on in the game where a few of your vehicles have been uh, thinned out uh, and you do have the action points but this is just a little niggle for me um, I'm not being you know, I, uh, this is not a, a, a big criticism. It's just something uh, that I kind of noticed. Uh, I do think the, the theme could be stronger if there were missions or scenarios to follow. But uh, once again, I know this is something that's being worked on and it's going to be interesting to see where Mark takes this game. Overall, um, I would say that there's always a danger with self-published games that without a developer, there can be some problems later down the road. Uh, they won't, uh, the, because we're too close to our, our little babies, we, are, we kind of overdo it or um, we don't polish the game. There's some mechanics that don't quite work right and we want to keep it in there, but really some things could be shed. Now, with this game, I would say that it, it is really well done. I don't think it needs any more work. It works perfectly fine as it is. And I really like it. It is so much fun to play. If you like that idea of driving around and uh, around this, this wasteland and just blasting your opponents and being blasted uh, to pieces, um, well, this game does exactly that. Uh, and you will have such a fun and a blast, uh, regardless of whether you win or lose this game, just, just, um, just, just playing it. Uh, just, just getting those, those crazy rolls, rolling a six and then rolling another six, which just has happened, and then doing, and there's taking one vehicle out, like, uh, that requires loads of hits in one turn. Um, it is, it is a fun game to play, and I would say, you know, if you have an opportunity to to get this game and you like those type of this type of game, then just go out and check out, uh, go contact Mark and, and buy yourself a copy. So that's me. This is a. Uh, it's rare that I that I just fall over a game, and this is one that I think I'll be playing for um, for the foreseeable future. So that's it for now. Um, I hope to see you soon. Catch you later and take care. <laughs>